Classic Ristos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gun Lake Quarries. On this week's show, I bring you to the beautiful seaside town of Portland, southwest Victoria. It's home of Portland Classics by the Bay Show and Shine. They used to do whaling here years ago, out in the ocean. Well, I suppose they'd have to have done it out in the ocean, wouldn't they? Well, they couldn't have done it up in town. The whaling. <laughs> How beautiful is this place? Portland by the Bay. We're only about half a metre above sea level. The donut man behind me, he's having big rushes. He's in for huge sales this year. Around 200 vehicles turned up in 2020 and we're about to see what's in store for us in 2021. Each and every year, the man we blame, the organiser for this Classics by the Bay, the Portland Show and Shine. How are you, Craig? Fantastic, thanks, Fletch. That's good. How are you feeling, mate? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, good. Good for this time of the day. Um, it's been some long hours, but we got there, so. The annual anticipation. Ah, oh, mate. It all, it's the same every year, so, yeah. Uh, look, what you do for uh, for the whole town, you, you, you're renowned for organising charities and helping other people. Now, this guy here has two prosthetic legs. And we never hear boo out of you. You never, the whinge is not in this guy's vocab. You just head down, bum up. You do a fantastic job for Portland. And of course, organising this show uh, each and every year as well, Craig. Thanks, Fletch. Yeah, it's, um, well, as they say, you know, no point laying down and dying. You've got to get up and do it while you can. So yeah. that's my motto. Well, you run around here better than most. <laughs> yeah, you see a few fellas getting around here during the day and you think, oh, that poor bugger. <laughs> well, I just wanted to mention that because, uh, you know, we realise it's hard work for you, uh, but you, uh, you you just keep on going and uh, there's so much to be said for that. Now, not only that, not only did this man organise this fantastic event every year uh, with Renee and, uh, and a couple of other people with the club as well, obviously, but... He practices what he preaches as well. A beautiful 1974 Tirana. Now, in the past, you, uh, you've never really come to me and said, Fletch, can I have it on the show? It's always been in the back blocks. Someone said to me last night, his car is nice, and I think it's worthy to mention that on today's show. Yeah, well, tell me who it was. <laughs> no, nah, look, it is. Um, I've had this car 30 years this month, and uh, in the last 20 years, it sat in the shed, unrestored. I thought, well, it's time to get it out, get it done. So, yeah, it, it took a lot of getting this car. It took me 10 years to convince the guy that used to own it to sell it to me. And, uh, yeah, and it just went from there. Once I got it, as your younger days and, you know, running around like we did, I'm surprised it actually survived. But here it is, original, matching numbered, 1974 SLR. It's a cool car to have in 2021, Craig. Oh, most certainly, you know. Um, I can remember trying to sell it many years ago. And I thought, I'm not getting rid of it for that. Yeah. And now... <laughs> well, these were the cars, when they were brand new, we were kids, we just used to look at. <laughs> exactly. We could never jump in one of these. And I suppose that's like a kid today, too, Fletch. Like, yeah. you know, a kid today would go, well, what we thought was big money then, well, these things, you know, they've yeah. gone through the roof. Now, to me, the f at first glance, and as I approached the car, Craig, it's, it's never been messed with. I thought, straight away, what an honest car. 
I can remember years ago, you know, my mates, all my younger mates would be going, oh, let's, let's put flares on it, let's cut the guards, let's do this. And I've always said, no, I want to leave this car. One day I had the vision of doing this. Never thought it would happen. And, uh, yeah, that's how I, this, this thing ran a, a stroker of the 671 blower on it for a while, top load, a nine inch. It was a, a very quick car. And I always sat that original motor under the bench in the shed. Always had that plan of putting it yes, back like yes. this one day. Here we go. Always do this. I, I've been a big advocate for this. If you ever do take your original engine out of your car to bolt something in, make sure you, you do keep that original engine. That is a, a very special point. And uh, that was my next line, too, to comment on the little 253 um, under the hood there and no one's got it and put another engine in it uh, okay it's been through the see it's been through that period of time the these cars are the lucky ones to come out now because as, as you mentioned earlier Craig what used to be done to these cars I'd say in the 80s and maybe into the early 90s in some cases was it was sacrilege oh for sure what to see some of them get cut up like they did mm. you know like um, yeah it's just unbelievable Craig, I'll let you get back to it. You're a busy guy here today. Again, you're a good bloke, and uh, thank you for your efforts. I'm, I'm sure that's uh, I'm speaking on the behalf of many, many people, not only in the car club, but around Portland as well. Keep up your great work, and uh, great for uh, seeing you again, mate. It's always nice to come here. Oh, it's always a pleasure catching up with you, Fletch and Donna, and, uh, yeah, to get down here to our show every year. It is, yeah, we really appreciate it, mate. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Craig. Got our Chinese tonight, mate, haven't we? We have, so everyone will want to come, Fletch. Yeah. That's the only reason I come here, just <laughs> for the feed. Yeah. Thanks, Craig. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Yeah, look, I, I bought this car off an older gentleman. He's a mate. I've known him all my life. And I, I wanted it as a 15-year-old kid. I started hunting this car. And it, and ever since then, I just fell in love with it. Took me, as I said, took me 10 years to get it. But, yeah, it wasn't going anywhere. I knew then it wasn't going anywhere else. It just, and now, that car, it ain't going anywhere. It's not for sale. Won't be for sale. They'll be selling it after I'm long gone. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's my baby. This car sat in the shed for 20 years unrestored, basically stripped. And I'd go out to the shed, you know, and, and just sit there and look at it. And having that vision, they're doing it one day, and it just took me a while. But, and then it just come to me one day, I said, nah, it's time to do this now. I've got to restore this car and put it back to its glory, how it was. Um, you know, as far as going to my panel beater and going, Mate, I just want it to look like it did in 1974 and sitting on the showroom floor. And yeah, I just had those visions looking at it in that shed for those 20 odd years. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Moving on through Portland Classics by the Bay for 2021. This is the gold, in my opinion. These are the cars we're all after, the ones that have been pulled from the barns. How are you, Lisa? I'm very well, thank you, Fletch. Thanks for coming along. Oh, thanks for being here. That's all right, my pleasure. Now, in my opinion, we're, we're looking at a car here, original. Uh, nothing's been done to this car. It's never been painted. It's, it's how you found it. You're not fixing up someone else's bad breakfast. This is a brilliant example. This is how she rolled off the factory floor without her dings and scars, but yeah, absolutely original. Lisa, we're looking at a 1970 HG Kingswood wagon, uh, complete with uh, air-conditioned, ventilated front bench seat. Yes, that's correct. The front bench seat is air-conditioned. <laughs> uh, this is how you find them. Isn't it a funny thing? Years and years ago, these are the reasons, like a cut in the seat or a ding in the rear quarter, these were the reasons why people would trade the cars get rid of them and now we're saying to ourselves we want to find a car with a split seat and a ding rear quarter you know we want that now absolutely you know, she's 
a testament to the times. She's survived 50 years. Now, you've got a few Hollands in your collection. Uh, you seem to have the eye to find these things, which is good on you. Good on you. Um, what's the story here? What, do you, what can you tell us about this particular wagon? My husband is a truck driver. His truck broke down and he jumped on Facebook and this popped up. And I'd said about a fortnight before, I want one in every series in the KTG. So the Monaro, the panel van, the sedan, the wagon. It popped up and he contacted the guy within a minute of it going up. He rang me and he said, it's just come up. I said, I was about to tag you in it. He said, I've bought it, rang him back, paid a deposit. By the time he finished paying the guy the deposit, he'd received 40 phone calls. There's a lot to be said for timing. Oh, absolutely. We're talking such a base model car here too. Uh, three on the tree as well. Yes, three on the tree that, uh, you know, not everyone can drive. No. <laughs> it's a, a learned skill. Yes. So she's pretty sure to not be stolen because you couldn't drive her. <laughs> and having said that though, um, the, the old Holden three-speed gearbox is such a, a beautiful, simple little box to use though too, isn't it? Uh, it sure is. Yeah, very simple, very easy to drive if you know how to and almost bulletproof. <laughs> Talking of bulletproof, I've got to say, got a bit of time there for the old 186 up front. They were they were a, an engine that uh, that held a good accolade. Um, they didn't get the recognition of the 202 at Bathurst in an XU1, but a 186, a, a good, strong red engine. Very, very good, strong, reliable, starts first time, every time. And how many times do you hear that? Uh, a lot of our old cars, uh, the ones that are, are well made, they can sit for 40 years, 50 years, put a battery on them, a bit of fuel down the car, be turned the key and boom, they start. And I, I just, I love that. Yes, absolutely. Now, this had sat in a shed for 15 years. It was covered in an inch and a half of dust. It started, they'd, it's still got the original battery. It started straight away. I see you've done a, a few little things to it. Obviously, a brand new set of uh, tyres, well, that makes sense. Uh, nice set of 195s you've put on there. I like how you've kept the factory steel wheels and, of course, the hold and push, uh, push on hubcaps as well. Um, these are the sorts of cars where, I guess, you know, 20 years ago, uh, or maybe even 10 years ago, people might have thought, right, let's strip it down, let's give it new paint. I think we're... I'm not saying don't do that, but I also think we've gone past that era as well where I think how you find them like this, do your mechanicals, get them spot on and just enjoy the car. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, it's a testament to surviving. Mm. It's a, a true survivor. Yeah. All right, Lisa, well, thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate your time. Love the wagon. Uh, as I said, this is, the, this is the gold now, in, in my opinion, seeing cars just like this and... Uh, We've all got memories of them, whether there's someone in the family that had them or just being able to remember them when we were kids. Uh, there's, there's something about an old car and it can trigger that, that, um, the heartstrings and, and I think that's most of it as well. It takes us back to good times. Nice. It, yeah. In a different time. In a different time, yeah. 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 All right, thanks again, Lisa. Thanks, Fletch. This old girl means the world to me. She takes me back to a time growing up where streets were free, we could play. We didn't lock our cars, we didn't lock our houses. We could play until the streetlights came on. It just takes me back to that era straight away. These old cars are fantastic to drive. You jump in, uh, the seat belts aren't automatic adjusters. You've got to adjust them to you, but you get in and it, the seat belt's adjusted to you every single time. Steering takes a little bit more on the tighter turning circles, but they just drive like a dream. She sits on the road beautifully parks up, drives, visibility is fantastic. You can see better in some of this than some of the newer cars. This car, she's 50 years old, half a century, and still drives as good as today's cars, if not better. She's just absolutely beautiful. Now there is no way in the world that you can bring a 1936 Auburn to the show without getting interviewed. Isn't that right, Terry? Oh, it looks very much like that, yes, yes. <laughs> I can't be honest with you, he didn't really uh, feel up to being interviewed. I kind of talked him into it because it's a stunning car, and as I just alluded to, it's, it's not the type of car that you see at every car show. What can you tell us about this outstanding Auburn, Terry? Well, it's a 1936 852 supercharged Phaeton. Um, I bought it probably probably 45 years ago. Uh, I took 20 years to restore the car and I've driven it many, many miles since and it's been a great car and I enjoy it. We're talking the uh, one of the highest upper 
echelons here, 1936 in the United States of America, to have been able to afford one of these cars. And the packing order went Auburn, Cord, then Duesenberg. So with due respects, this is the entry level, but you'd never know that by looking at it. It, it, is, it is outstanding. The yeah. bright work, the shape, beautiful. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Yeah, they were quite a smart car for their day, yes. Very so 45 years ago, how, how, how did that come along for you? Uh, they were, yeah, I was lucky to get onto it, but it was in a very sad state when I bought it. Uh, very rusty, um, down mechanically, but I went right through it rebuilt everything and you know it's just been a great car i just love it the badging uh, the script there supercharged how outstanding is that considering we still have that method of aspiration even today now give us a rundown on the mechanicals in terms of the size of the engine and what you can there right it's a it's a lycoming engine straight eight flathead uh 291 cubic inch i think they are um it's supercharged. The supercharger is driven off the timing chain area and it spins six times the speed of the engine, the supercharger. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it's a quite an economical car. It does 18 to 20 miles to the gallon, which is pretty good for an American car. Now we look inside the beautiful interior, the big bolstered leather seats, uh, looking at the view there, the Art Deco dash and in, in all its exuberance sitting there with those beautiful gauges, uh, finely detailed. Back in 1936, that's, what, a, what an elaborate motor car to have. Oh, yes, that's right, exactly, yeah. Yeah, they were quite a, for the price of them, they had a lot of good stuff in them, you know, they did, they, they were very well nicely laid out. Now typically an American car obviously they were left hand drive. Tell us the story with the right hand drive. Well they did produce right hand drive cars in America for the export market. Uh, they were exported to quite a few countries, the Albans and um, yeah they sort of originally right hand drive car. Yeah. Interesting stuff because I don't think anybody here uh, in later decades uh, would have been game enough to attempt a conversion on a car like this. No, probably not. No, it would have been just left left hand drive if it was, but um, yeah, yeah. The Portland Classics by the Bay Show, it, it's about variety. The numbers are increasing, possibly the biggest year so far in 2021, and it's the quality of the cars as well. And the car behind us is just an outstanding example as to what this show is now attracting here at Portland. Once again, thank you very much, Terry. Thank you, Fletch. Many thanks. Good. Owning a Classic is also about owning the passion and that's where Shannon's comes in why not pick up the phone and give Shannon's a call for a quote and a chat on 134646 for a discussion as to what policy and premium suits you best and for more information as to how to sign up to be a member of the Shannon's Club visit shannons.com.au and speaking of upper echelon cars, time now for a 1956 Cadillac how are you John? I'm doing well Fletch and thank you great to be with you thanks for hanging around my pleasure. This guy, John, was on his way out of the grounds and I caught him just before he left because I, you're very worthy of an interview. Beautiful Cadillac. I've noticed the uh, American badge there uh, with the uh, dealership on the, the lower uh, corner of the trunk lid. So uh, you must have a story to tell us. Well, I did some history on it, Fletch, and uh, discovered it was sold new in Asheville, North Carolina. It means it's a Smoky Mountains car. Built on February the 26th, 1956. Sedan Deville, they built 47,000 of them and uh, had, the, had the privilege of bringing it out here. How long have you had it? 17 years nearly. John, this would feel like a limb to you. This, this, is, this car's not going anywhere. This is staying with you forever, correct? <laughs> not going anywhere in the sense that, you know what it's like, you're, you're stewards of these things. Yes. Temporary custodians. Absolutely correct. Yep, yeah, that's my understanding too. The average American didn't buy Cadillacs uh, you know, they were a very, very expensive car. When this car was brand new, you could have bought a, you know, a, a house and land um, in, a, in a regional part of America Almost. at the time. Yeah. Correct. I mean, for me, Fletch, the interesting thing was the way I got it, in that I had an, another 56 before this mm -hmm. that needed a king's ransom spent on it. And I'm not a king and I'd never ransom. So I watched eBay for 12 months. There was only one photograph that counted, that was the engine bay. 
things go missing from 1956 Cadillac engine bays. This one had the lot. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Yeah, speaking of which, what powers this up front? It's, uh, it's a 365 V8, cubic inch for every day of the year, of course. When you look inside, it's so spacious and opulent. The bright work, once again, the fine detail that Cadillac always prided themselves on. Right. Yep. And surprising to me, and maybe to many others, was the fact that it's, it's almost as new. We look down the side of this car for 1956, John, and we can almost see that fuselage styling there happening in 56 yep. with some added elaborate curves yep. around it. Yep. The interesting thing is, Fletch, I did some homework on that, trying to figure out what was in the mind of the stylist people to come up with this. The answer was very interesting. They said it was modelled on a P-38 Lightning aircraft. So when you look at the front, there are the twin engines... When you look at the rear, here are the fins, and you think, golly, that's actually quite creative. They've caught a spirit of something there. It is, John, and it's also back in an era, especially too in the United States, where it was an era of, uh, of space travel, and it was an era of comic books and, and space age inspired stuff, yep. um, well before man was put on the moon in 69. Mm. So mm. you can imagine the anticipation for the era uh, leading up with all these technologies that were around at the time. Yep. Well, what's interesting to me is uh, it's come with the Autronic Eye, the automatic headlight dipper. And I thought, golly, 1956, and it works, but it's a nightmare in the bush. Because if you leave it on, it goes up and down for every reflector every 100 yards or so. It's interesting, well, having a chat just earlier uh, prior to filming yourself, John, and having a discussion with a guy uh, over there with Terry's uh, Auburn, and this, this talk came about, and it's like as though today we've still got, we've still got all of these inventions and all of these technologies, yeah. but just more refined. I think that's right, and for me, I used to be a history teacher, and cars reflect the age. And I think this sort of motor car was talking about the exuberance of the post-war period. Yep. You know, the prosperity, mm. the land of the free, yes. let's think big, not small. So there's a whole historic statement here as well. I've always thought that myself. There's no future in small. Well, no. Not in the middle 50s, it certainly wasn't. John, been a pleasure uh, catching up with you. But just before I do go, could I ask you, uh, what was your, uh, your, your, last, uh, your, your career? Uh, I started off as a high school teacher then spent 45 years plus as a Baptist pastor. Wow. Hmm. Well, it's, it, it's the, the, the church has been kind to you. <laughs> I've been very blessed. <laughs> and thank you, Fletch. Good on you, John. No, it's been a pleasure. And I appreciate the kind words that you gave me um, as I approached you as well oh, for coming to, well, to Portland. No. Thank you and Donna for coming. We appreciate it very, very much. That's all right. That's my pleasure. Thank you very much, John. Fletch, thank you. Well, I think a nice way to round off today's show, a 1969 VF Pacer. How are you doing, Steve? Not bad, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Good. Bringing back nice memories for you. Remember many years ago, same time of the day, your Black Valiant on the sand here? Yeah, it was very good. Um, I enjoyed that, and it's been a really good day today, So, and they've had a really good turnout. It is excellent, and it's time now to relive a moment because another opportunity with, with one of your Valiant cars here. Nice car, original Pacer, well done. Yeah, um, I bought this car from a, a place or a guy in Murray Bridge. I wasn't really looking for one, come, come across it by accident, and uh, I went and had a look at it, and when I seen it, I thought, well, I've got to have it. So I went all out and uh, bought it. What's interesting too, I think the story here, uh, obviously surrounding itself, encompassing one of the strongest six-cylinder petrol engines, or gasoline engines if you're watching in the United States, ever built. There's even a book on the slant, one of the most universal six-cylinder engines ever made. Uh, agriculture use, marine use, and of course automo automotive. Um, these engines were exceptional. Um, in terms of strength, very, very strong engines. So when Chrysler decided to put them into a Valiant, give them a two-barrel carb, it's interesting they did a few little things on the inside too, just to make uh, it more in line with calling this car a pacer. To my knowledge, they did work on the head and uh, they changed the cam, which I think brought the normal sl Slant 6 was 145 horsepower which the work they did on these, they brought them up to about 170. Yeah. So, which makes them a little bit more goey than the rest of them.
A very smart looking car, uh, nice lines and uh, obviously here today with a, a beautiful backdrop behind it. Um, originally interior too Steve, very very well kept, uh, the tombstone front seats as well, um, bucket seats in beautiful condition. Um, it's nice to have an original car but when you see these interiors unmolested and all these decades down the track as well, it's just an extra score isn't it? It is, I was very lucky to find it because uh, the interior is untouched still got the original silver piping around the back of the seats yeah. and that's you know you can tell by because that come out of the factory like that yeah. and that's how you sort of one of the yeah. uh, how you pick them from original um, so I was really lucky to get it. Now the car has been painted in the past a very a very good job done there in its original blue as well. Yeah cosmic blue um, this was the colour that they used on their uh, advertising brochure when they were marketing the car so um, the, yeah, the cosmic blue, they had a brochure, they put a brochure out with this, this colour yeah. on, the, on their brochure, so yeah. yeah. Good on you Steve, well thank you for hanging around mate, it's been a pleasure catching up with you. Nice to see a VF Pacer, obviously the last year of the slant yeah, uh, nice. before the Hemi was introduced, with the next model being the, the VG. Mm, that's right, because then they went to the more exotic colours, orange, yellows. And that's what Chrysler Australia inherited from Chrysler in the United States. They were a little bit bit more game with their colours. Yeah, they were. Like, I can remember as a young bloke going to the local Chrysler dealer and uh, the first, like the VG with the Hemis in them, the bright canary yellow yeah. rocker covers and yeah. the black stripes and yeah. everyone was in such shock. Of because of the bright colours. See, to the old blokes back then, you know, 38, 40 years of age, they just would have looked upon those Larry, th those colours were just way too Larry. Yeah, they were. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Now we've got 70 year old blokes and, yeah, and, looking, and for looking for them. It's great to reminisce about what we know and what we can remember about these cars, and uh, it's a great example right here, mate. Thanks again, Steve. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, I hope you've really enjoyed this week's episode of Classic Restos featuring the classics by the bay here in Portland. A massive thanks to the Portland Classic Car Club, Craig and Renee and the whole team putting this fantastic event together for 2021. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, where you can be a member of the Shannon's Club, Pace Farm the Enjoyable Egg, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Gunlake Quarries.